All right, everybody, welcome back. And this time I'm going to be doing a DVD update. Uh, this is going to be a long video. I have so much stuff here because all this dates back to like August. Um, so I have a ton of DVDs, Blu rays, a few video games, and some CDs. So let's get started first with uh, the video games and the CDs. But before I get started, um, you probably can't see it, but I'm wearing a Bruce Lee t shirt. Um, good news for Bruce Lee fans, they actually found all of the footage from the Game of Death that Bruce Lee shot. So um, it's probably not going to come out this year since it's already, you know, December is pretty much almost halfway over. So um, they're probably going to release it next year for Bruce, Bruce Lee's 75th birthday. So you can look forward to seeing that. But yeah, they actually found all the footage from Game of Death, which I've been saying for years, but nobody wants to listen to me. But um, anyway, let's get started with the video games. First up is actually two uh, PlayStation games and then a PlayStation 2 game. First up is Cool Borders 2. Um, this is a snowboarding game. I, my cousin had this, and uh, I remember we used to go to his house and play it all the time. And... Uh, uh, it's my cousin, but he's a dick. I mean, because I remember, like, he was supposed to give us all his old games and stuff, and he never did. He's just a dick. But I do remember going to his house and playing Cool Borders, too. I got this at Goodwill. It was uh, three bucks, so that's not bad at all. But fun game. And then I got, um, if the case wants to stay shut, uh, also at Goodwill, uh, Fighting Force 2. Now, I this game is okay. Uh, I have the first one, and the first one is a much better game, in my opinion. Um, this one, I think you only play as the lead character. I know in the first game you can play as like four or five different characters. I think it was four, four, but this one, um, not 44, but just four characters. And this one, I think you only play as the lead guy. But, I mean, that's okay. I mean, it's okay. That's my phone. It's an okay game. It's definitely not as good as the first one, but it's still fun. And uh, let me see what this is all about. Uh, it's just a text. It's a girl who's my friend, but she's not my girlfriend yet. Um, and then, <laughs> and then I got this game at a thrift store today. Uh, this was only like a dollar ninety nine, so it wasn't. A bad deal. I might play it later, and that is uh, from Russia with Love, the James Bond game. It actually has Sean Connery in the game. Sean Connery does the voice of James Bond, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I've been wanting to get this for a little while. So there we go, and it's in like really good shape. Like I guess the person never really played it, and the disc. I don't think the disc has any scratches on it. It's got some light scratches, but that's normal. I mean, but, but it's in really good shape. So that was awesome for two dollars. And next we'll get into some CDs here. Now, I've recently been buying CDs again, um, but I usually don't. I usually just download all my music, which I know people are going to say, eh. but you know what? Everybody fucking downloads music, okay? And I think I forgot. Yeah, I forgot a few. I'll be right back. I know where they're at. actually just forgot one but that's okay but now everyone downloads music okay so I don't want to hear that crap about you know oh you shouldn't download music because this 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 that this, this. no don't pull that shit on me because like I said everybody downloads music so I don't want to hear it but what I usually do is I download music and if I like that band or that song I'll go buy the CD that's just how it is but the first three are CD soundtracks, which is the ones that people are probably the most interested in. And I got, the first two were a dollar. I got them at a, a store. And the last one, I think, was like $4 or something. I got it at FYE. But first up, I got the soundtrack to Coneheads, which I also got on DVD, which you'll be seeing later in the update. And I thought this was a pretty good soundtrack. It's got um, Soul to Squeeze by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which was in this. Um, it's got Bare Naked Ladies on here, R.E.M., uh, Paul Simon, Kodachrome, which was in the movie, Tainted Love, the original version, um, Magic Carpet Rides on here by Slash. So there's a bunch of different stuff on here. I really enjoyed this soundtrack. 
So that's Coneheads. Great film. And then this one was, like I said, was also a dollar. This one I actually have not listened to yet. But I do, I know like a, most of the song, I think all the songs are in the movie. Um, but I enjoy this movie and I think it has a good soundtrack. So I got Clueless, the soundtrack. Love Clueless. Clueless is a great movie. I mean, it's just, it's a fun 90s film. You know, it was, it was a different time. You know, I think it's nostalgic for a lot of people, including me, because I remember when it came out and everything. But I love Clueless, and it's a pretty good soundtrack. I, most of the songs are in the movie, but I just haven't listened to this CD yet. So that is that. And then the last CD soundtrack, um, like I said, this one was like $4 or $3. It wasn't that much. It was cheap. Um, but I've been wanting to get this for a while, so I finally picked up the soundtrack to Mortal Kombat, which my favorite video game film of all time, one of my favorite movies of all time growing up with it. I mean, kick-ass soundtrack on here. Not only do you have the Mortal Kombat theme, but you have Goodbye by Gravity Kills, Juke Joint Jezebel by KMFDM. Great songs on here. There's my phone again. Stop. Stop, Arnold. You're not going to be back. But yeah, that's the soundtrack to Mortal Kombat. Uh, then these are just like regular CDs. I got this one today at Goodwill. This was $1.97. Um, but I do like this band and I actually don't have any of their CDs. This is actually, yeah, this is actually the first CD I have of this band. But I've always liked this band. And I know that they're actually on their final tour, like after this tour, they're, they're not going to tour anymore and stuff. Which is, it's, you know, it's okay. I mean, but at least we have all their music to listen to. So I got a Decade of Decadence, 1981 until 1991, Motley Crue. Now this is kind of weird because it has like remixes and a couple live versions like and, and new songs on here. So it's not really like the best of Motley Crue. It's just, you know, um, like their greatest hits but different versions and stuff like that. But that's cool because I've always liked Motley Crue. You know, I like hair metal and heavy metal and all that. Uh, this next CD, I, it says $3, but I think I actually got it cheaper. I got it the same place I picked up the uh, the Coneheads and the Clueless soundtrack. Um, but I actually had this CD downloaded years ago. I had I made a CD of it, and I used to listen to it all the freaking time, like nonstop, over and over. And um, it was cool to go back and listen to it again now that I have like the legitimate copy of it. So it's the Best of Van Halen Volume 1, and KS, whoever the hell KS is, I have your CD and you're not getting it back, I'm sorry. Ugh, excuse me, I'm tired. But um, it's got, unfortunately this was the only one they did. They did another compilation, and it was called The Best of Both Worlds, but that's all they've done. But um, this has like all of the classic songs, Running With The Devil, Dance The Night Away, Jump, Why Can't This Be Love, Bl and then it has three new songs. Uh, that was weird. Uh, Humans Being from the Twister film. And Can't Get This Stuff No More. And Me Wise Magic, which was the two songs that they recorded with David Lee Roth when he came back to the band. So that's the best of Van Halen Volume 1. And what the fuck is going on now? Oh, I can't buy that right now. Okay, <laughs> next up is an Aerosmith CD, it's actually a live CD, and um, I think, I, yeah, I had a, I downloaded this, and I think this was the, because this is the, the, the dirty version, you know how like Walmart sells like only the clean versions and stuff like that, but this is like the dirty version, and that's why I wanted to get it, because it's got language and stuff in it, and that's just how Aerosmith is, you know, that's how their concerts are and stuff. But um, it, for the longest time, I couldn't find this version. I could only find the the edited version or the clean version or whatever. But it's called uh, A Little South of Sanity. And it's from the 90s, 98. So it's like from the Get a Grip tour and stuff like that. So, you know, all, all eras of Aerosmith are on here. But, um, you know, this was really kind of Aerosmith's last hurrah. I read a list. I just read a list, actually, and it was like the 20 bands that get worse with time or something. 
and like bands that you would expect were on there like Metallica because Metallica is definitely not as good as they used to be. Uh, Weezer is definitely not as good as they used to be. And Aerosmith was on there and I kind of agree with the list because like Get a Grip to me was like their last really good album. Everything after that was kind of okay. Shut up, phone. But this was pretty good. It was a pretty good live album. And then the next bunch of CDs... Uh, two, three, four. The next five are all from Kiss. Um, and I recently just started getting back into Kiss. I've always been a big fan of them. And, you know, for the longest time, I just kind of had their greatest hits and that was it. Now I'm, like, expanding and listening to more of their music and, and try to learn more... Excuse me, about the band and the different eras and everything. So I got some more of their CDs. Now, the only ones I had before this, I had the Unplugged album, which I really enjoyed. I had You Wanted the Best, You Got the Best, which was like a compilation of, of live stuff, which was good. And, I, and one of their greatest hits albums. But um, I got Destroyer, which was arguably like their best album and the one that really got them into the big time. Um, and this one has God of Thunder, Detroit Rock City, Shout It Out Loud, Beth. Do You Love Me, King of the Nighttime World. So a bunch of great songs on here. So that's Destroyer. And then I got Ace Frehley's solo album. Um, I thought this was the best one out of the solo albums. I have the other ones downloaded. But this one was definitely the best. And this one was the highest selling as well. And I really like Peter Chris's. I really like Paul Stanley's. Gene Simmons I like too. But I don't know. Gene Simmons just kind of gets on my nerves. All this, All this shit that he's been saying lately. And... I don't know, he's just very annoying to me, but I still like him as a musician, but as a person, he just, he gets on my last nerve. But I love Ace Fraley, I think he's a great guitarist, he is the spaceman, and uh, this was a great album. It's got New York Groove on here, Rip It Out, a lot of great songs on there. Uh, this one I got today at Goodwill with uh, the Motley Crue um, CD, and this was really the album that got Kiss in the in the popularity of the mainstream and everything and it is alive um yeah this is the first alive because they've done four but classic songs on here deuce strutter got to choose hotter than hell firehouse nothing to lose come on and love me parasite black diamond rock bottom cold gin and this is where the live version of rock and roll all night comes from the song that made them popular and everything and this is really the album that did it was alive so, yeah, the double CD set, these old sets like this, I love. So that is a live. Great album. And then this is, like, the next two are, like, the, the later, like, the like the most recent stuff of Kiss. Um, this one is Carnival of Souls, The Final Sessions. Now, this album was actually supposed to come out right after they did the Unplugged concert. But because the response was so positive for the original members... Um, that's when they did the reunion tour, so this album actually got pushed back. And when it came out, like, all the fans already had bootleg copies of it and everything. And this one, it just kind of got blown over. But I liked it. I, I enjoyed the, the music. Because this was really, like, the return of the old school Kiss. Because in the 80s, you know, in the early 80s, after they took the makeup off, they were trying to do the heavy metal sound. And then in the late 80s, they were really trying to do, like, that pop rock type of sound. And they, they still had some good songs. But it just wasn't the same. And then Revenge in 92 was really like the return to the hard rock, like the Kiss sound. And then this album um, was the same thing. And this one has Eric Singer on the drums right there and Bruce Kulick on guitar. And I thought it was pretty good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stop. Um, so I thought it was a good album. And then this one... It's not their last album, but it's the one before that. And this was like their first album in like 15 years. Um, and it's a three-disc set, and it is Sonic Boom. And I like Sonic Boom. Now, the only problem I have is that this, as people know, Ace Frehley and Peter Chris aren't in the band anymore. It's now Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer once again. And the only problem I have is the fact that they're wearing the original makeup. That's the only problem I have with the band today, because Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer did not create the characters. They were not in the band when they were wearing makeup and everything. So that's my only my only gripe about Kiss today, you know. When Vinnie Vincent and Eric Carr were in the band, they created their own makeup. They created their own characters. Why can't Tommy Thayer and why can't Eric Singer? 
You know, I think the reason why they do it is because people only recognize the original characters, which is bullshit. People know who Eric Carr is. Eric Carr was an amazing drummer. It's very sad that he's gone. And Vinny Vincent is a great guitar player. I don't, I don't get it. But this also has a bonus CD called Kiss Classics, which is just, they went back and re-recorded a lot of the classic songs with the two new members. And I thought they were pretty good. Like Deuce is on there. Detroit Rock City, Shout It Out Loud, Hotter Than Hell, Calling Dr. Love, Love Gun, Heaven's On Fire, Lick It Up, I Love It Loud. There's a lot of good songs. And then it also has, and I didn't watch it yet, but it also has a bonus DVD, uh, Kiss Live in Buenos Aires. So maybe I'll pop that in sometime soon, but that is Sonic Boom. And that's all the CDs um, and the video games. Let me just check this quick, this damn phone. My lady friend. Okay, so that's done. So let's get into the TV shows and, and get these out of the way. Uh, first up, this was just a couple episodes of this TV show edited together like a movie. You guys will always hear me talk about like the VHS tapes that I pick up of that. But they've also done some DVD ones as well. And I love this series. And this was like $1.99, brand new. So I figured I'd pick it up. And they actually did two more of these, which I'd like to pick up. And this actually has extras, which is cool. Now, I don't know if these are on, like, the season sets or these are specifically for this release or not, but I'll check them out. But I got Highlander Unholy Alliance, and this is actually from season two of Highlander. Basically, it's just a two-part episode edited together like a movie, and I know they released it on VHS back in the day, so if I could find those, that would be cool. But it has an audio commentary with Adrian Paul, Jim Burns, Bill Panzer, and Don Panessa, and interviews with David Amberwitz, Bill Panzer, and Peter Ellis. So that's pretty cool. I, like I said, I don't know. The commentary is probably from the box set, but I don't know if the interviews are from the, the Highlander DVD box set. If it is, it's not a big deal. I have those as well. But that would be cool if like they did new extras for these. But that is Unholy Alliance. Next up, I got... Uh, this is the first of many cartoon DVDs that I picked up. And, you know, you're, you're never too old for cartoons. And you're never... You know, honestly... You like what you want. That's that's always been my philosophy, you know. But I love cartoons. I love picking up cartoons on not just DVD, but VHS and Laserdisc as well. But uh, I've been wanting to get this series for quite a while. And I actually used to watch this when they showed the reruns on Fox Kids in the early 2000s. Yeah, I remember watching this cartoon because I, I wasn't aware that they had done a cartoon until that, you know, those uh, reruns. Because this, remember... Early 2000s, there was no YouTube, there was no Facebook, there was no nothing, you know. There was no internet, really. I mean, you had internet, but you didn't have what we have today. You know, you, you don't have all these TV show sites and DVD sites. You didn't have all that back in the in the early 2000s. But um, I got this for like, I think it was like 8 bucks or something. It was pretty cheap. But I got the complete animated series of Dungeons & Dragons. And this is the Mill Creek release. I know all the episodes on here are uncut. Because I know the the previous set, um, I think the episodes were all edited, if I'm not mistaken. But I believe these are all uncut, if I'm, not mis if I'm correct. Okay, you know what? We're going to do something here. We're going to turn the volume down because I can hear it when it vibrates. There we go. I didn't think I was going to hear it when I was making this video. So we won't have any more interruptions, hopefully. But that is... Dungeons and Dragons, the animated series. Remember watching that back in the day. Next up is I got two more seasons of The Simpsons, and I actually picked these up at a Goodwill, and I believe these were like seven bucks each, but they're in really, really good shape. I was very surprised, and these were the only seasons that they had. Um, that, no, they actually had season one, but I already have season one. But these were like really good shape and they have all the inserts and everything. But I got season two and season three of The Simpsons. And like I said, these were like seven bucks a pop. So hell yeah, I'm definitely going to take advantage of that. 
And I know right now Walmart has, I think, season four for 10 bucks, so I might actually go grab that sometime soon. Because, first of all, I don't know what the fuck is the problem with the DVDs. Like, they, they only release them, like, once a year now. That's just so fucking stupid. Like, why wouldn't you not release two or three a year and get them out of the way? Because they're only... I think they just released this month season 17 or season 18, and they're on, what, season 25, 26 almost? Season 26 is going to come on in the fall? Like, come on, Fox. Like, hurry up and fucking finish them. I mean, come on. And the other problem I have is, like, when you go to FYE, like... FYE has these, but they're still 30 bucks. I'm not paying 30 bucks for a DVD that came out, what did these come out, over 10 years ago? Yeah, this one came out in 2000, oh, 2002, and this one came out in 2003. Why are they still 30 bucks? That doesn't make any sense. So that's what I try to do when I go to a Goodwill or a thrift store. If they have these, like for cheap, I'm going to get them because, number one, if I go back the next day, they won't be there. And number two... You know, you got to take advantage of that. I'm not paying $30 a season. Now, granted, they are brand new, but that's still too much. But anyway, a little rant on the Simpsons DVDs. But fucking Fox, if you're watching, get your fucking dick out of your ass and fucking finish the Simpsons so we can have them on DVD before something up, before the next format comes out. Jesus. Anyway, okay, moving on. Um, my dad actually gave me this because he had an extra copy uh, and this is a TV series that I love. And I have the first three seasons, and this is season four, and I just have to get the rest. And I'm talking about Seinfeld. Love Seinfeld. I have the first three seasons. I have the box set, which is it's a pretty cool box set. And then they did this one, and then they did a f season five and six box set, which comes with the puffy shirt, which I want to get that, and then seven, eight, and nine. So I'm trying to finish up Seinfeld because I really want to go back and watch all the episodes again. I mean, I know they're still on in syndication, but, you know, just to watch them in order and everything is awesome. I love Seinfeld. Classic series. Now, this one I actually picked up yesterday, and I got this for 20 bucks. Um, actually, my mom got it for me as part of my Christmas gift. But um, everywhere I go, this was like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, and I finally I got it at a uh, BJ's. Ha ah, ha BJ, B no. BJ's is like a wholesale club, like Sam's Club or Costco, and uh, this was 20 bucks, so I knew I had to pick it up, so I got the Pacific. Nice tin case here, and this is actually the sequel to Band of Brothers. I already have Band of Brothers. I got Band of Brothers, I don't think it was last year, I think it might have been the year before last, on Black, it wasn't on Black Friday, it was like a couple days after Black Friday, Walmart still had a bunch of copies, and I got that for like 15 bucks or something, it was really cheap. And then I paid 20 for this, which was when my mom got it. But it was 20 bucks, so that's awesome. But I can't wait to check out the Pacific. I've never seen this one. I've seen some of Band of Brothers. I've never seen the uh, the Pacific, though. But okay, anyway, we're going to rearrange here. And actually, I got all these at BJ's as well back around Halloween. Because BJ's is like, it's like I said, it's like a wholesale club, like Sam's Club and stuff. So my mom goes there because, you know, you can get like, you know, five bags of chips for, like, the price of one. You know what I mean? But um, I also like to look at their DVDs because a lot of times they'll have DVDs cheaper, like this and another DVD or Blu-ray pack that I got yesterday. But I got these, like I said, back around Halloween. And this is a, there are uh, six DVDs, but it's actually a three-pack. So it's, like, three DVDs for the price of one, which is really cool. And I think these might be two or three disc sets. I haven't even opened them, but I got a bunch of Goosebumps DVDs. Now, Goosebumps, the shitty thing is, in the UK, they release them in season sets, and here they just release random volumes of random episodes, like they do with a lot of TV shows. But um, I got these because this is actually the majority, right here is the majority of the DVDs that are out. There's only like five or six that I don't have. I'm trying to get those. And they're still like, I mean, they've been releasing these for like 10 years. And they still haven't released all the episodes. Like, The Haunted Mask is not out on DVD. And that's like the most popular episode of Goosebumps. Like, I don't get it. Again, you know, these are from Fox. What the fuck, Fox? Get your fucking dick out of your ass, not your thumb. Get your dick out of your ass and fucking do them right. Or just do season sets. 
But anyway, these were six bucks each. I thought they were a good deal. Like I said, it's basically three DVDs for one. This one is Attack of the Mutant, The Blob That Ate Everyone, and Go Eat Worms. And then, like I said, it's three DVDs. So this one has three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine episodes on there. This one is One Day at Horrorland, Return of the Mummy, and Shocker on Shock Street. This one is two, four, five, six, seven episodes. You know, and they only did like 60 episodes, so it's like, good God, Fox, you can't do season one, season two. Like, what the fuck? Why is it so difficult to do it that way? I'm sorry, I get upset, you know. Like, The Simpsons, like, how long has The Simpsons been on? Why is it so hard to release all the seasons on DVD? Like, that is a big problem I have. Sorry, folks. Anyway, this one's Chilogy, The Ghost Next Door, and It Came From Beneath the Sink. And honestly, I like getting these because, like I said, it's three DVDs for one. So I just knocked out three DVDs, you know. And like I said, there's only like five or six that I need, and I'll have all of them. But anyway, so this one, it's three, six, seven, like eight episodes, you know. So you get like eight or nine episodes... As opposed to going and buying each DVD, you know. So there you go. This one's Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, The Headless Ghost, and The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. Three, six, nine. You know, nine. And I love, like, Goosebumps is, like, people still watch Goosebumps. Like, I think it's on The Hub or something. Like, people still know about this show. Why are not, you know, why? Like, come on, Fox. What the fuck? Really? All right, this one's Ghost Beach, A Night in Terror Tower, and Scary House. This one's two, three, four, five, six, seven. People know what Goosebumps is. And last but not least is Monster Blood, Night of the Living Dummy, and Say Cheese and Die. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight episodes. So right here... Six DVDs, but it's actually, so six times three, it's like 18 of them, you know, so that's a hell of a deal. And then I got some more cartoons and stuff here. First up, this is actually uh, one of the Super Friends DVDs, and this is another series that the DVD releases are just so fucking weird. Like, in total, they did nine seasons of Super Friends, but like this one has a different name, like all of them have different names, and... The way they did it, they should have just done Super Friends Season 1, Season 2, Season 3. But no, they couldn't do that. But this is actually the 8th season of Super Friends. And this is called Super Friends, The Legendary Superpower Show. And it does say the complete series, but it's it's only it's Season 8 of Super Friends. So there you go. And it has features on here. Not much, but like Evolution, New Heroes, New, or new Heroes... Viler Villains and Ethnic Editions, How Super Friends Prefigured the Era of Cultural Diversity in Animation, Superpowers Collection, The Effect of the Toy Industry, and Commentary on Five Episodes. And this actually has Adam West as Batman and Casey Kasem, May God Rest His Soul, as Robin. So, yep, and I got, this was like, what, three ninety nine. so... Because I heard, I got this at Ollie's, and I heard that they got a bunch of the Super Friends DVD, like a bunch of the superheroes and Super Friends but this was the only one I had, and I went to another Ollie's yesterday, and they didn't have any of them. But I got season eight. And then this next one is actually The New Adventures of Batman. And this was the one from the 70s. I don't remember watching this at all, because I was watching it, and I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen this. But this has Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman and Robin, which is pretty cool. And like I said, this was on in the 70s. Uh, Batgirl's in it as well, and so is Batmite. And I thought it was pretty cool. It's only 16 episodes, but I thought it was pretty cool. So that is the New Adventures of Batman. And then when I was at BJ's yesterday, they had the first Batman animated series, which was, I think that one's just called The Adventures of Batman. And that one has uh, Casey Kasem as Robin, but I didn't get it. Because um, I, cause I, the plan was I've got the Pacific and a Blu-ray set, and I was going to buy it myself. But my mom was like, no, I'll get it for Christmas. You know, you've been helping out a lot around the house and everything. You know, I'll, I'll treat you. And I was like, oh, shit, you know, because I could have went back and bought the Batman one myself. But, oh, well, maybe next time it'll be there. But that is the new adventures of Batman. 
And then I got a Batman the Animated Series DVD. Now, I actually already have the volumes, but before the volumes, they did, like, best of DVDs. And then even before that, uh, Columbia House, the video club back in the day, they released the pretty much the entire series on VHS, which I actually have coming in the mail. I have all those. And then they actually re-released most of them on DVD. And I actually have this one here, and I have another one of these DVDs coming in the mail. But this is Batman the Animated Series, the Collector's Edition, Volume 4. And how can you tell Volume 4? Because it says it on the spine. And that's what the front looks like, and that's what the back looks like. The artwork's the same on all of them. It says it has bonus materials, but I don't know. And this has the episodes Fear of Victory, I've Got Batman in My Basement, Vendetta, Prophecy of Doom, The Forgotten, and Mad as a Hatter. Now, these were all air, like, these were in the airing order and not production order, like the, the volumes. Um, but that is, I like to collect these because I remember these old Columbia House. I remember the VHS ones more, but they also did DVD ones, so I like to collect them. And plus, it's Batman the Animated Series. It's the best superhero cartoon ever. I mean, what else can compare? X-Men and Spider-Man, that's it. And then the last Batman animated stuff I got, I finally got a hold of these, which I've been wanting for a long time. And I got all these, like, really cheap. And that was a surprise, but I got all three seasons of Batman Beyond. Finally, I love Batman Beyond. So that's season one. Season two. And season three. And I love, like I said, I love Batman Beyond. It's a shame they canceled it, but it was. I thought it was a great cartoon. I really enjoyed it, and I love the Return of the Joker movie. I have that upstairs somewhere, but I love Batman Beyond. It's just, I love it, you know, and I'm so happy. Like, I paid, like, I think, I like, in total, this was, like, 35 bucks to get all three of these, so it wasn't that much. I got them really cheap, but I love Batman Beyond. And uh, next up is a Disney series. Now, I have the first season, and I have the first part of the second season. And this DVD, it actually got released last year as a uh, Disney Movie Club exclusive. And I was actually going to get it from there, but I didn't feel like joining the Disney Movie Club because they only have certain titles that you can buy. And it doesn't, like, Blu-rays don't count either and stuff like that. So I was going to get it off of eBay, but I didn't really want to pay the prices. And then I heard that um, they were going to Disney was actually going to release a bunch of DVDs uh, first a couple months earlier. Like I think back in October is when these came out at Walmart. And then in January, they're going to release them to every other store. So once I heard that this came out, I ran to Walmart. I literally, I, I, as soon as I found out, I was like, I got in the car and went to Walmart to get it. And I, I, I've been waiting, you know. That, that long to get this on DVD, and this was like 10 bucks or something, so I was just so happy. But I got Season 2, Volume 2, uh, Volume 2, Volume 2 of Gargoyles. Finally, finally, you know, finally they released Season 2, Volume 2. Like I said, I know last year they released it in the movie club, but I was so pissed when they did that. It's like, why can't you fuckers just release it at stores? See, like... Fucking Disney is the same way, but I like the artwork better on this, and I think the back looks pretty cool, too. But finally got this. They also released Tailspin Volume 3, which I like to get, and then they did two volumes of Goof Troop, and then they also released the DuckTales movie. So I might actually, when I get paid next week, because I have to pay a bill, and I'm not really going to buy anything online, because I've, I've been buying so much online. Maybe next week... I'll go to Walmart and just splurge and buy a bunch of animated series DVDs. Because they're only like 10 bucks each. So I might get those. And then I'm, there's some movies I want to get. Like Hercules with the Rock. Because I watched that and I really liked it. I liked November Man. Um, Simpsons. Like I said, Simpsons Season 4 is on sale right now. So I might pick that up. And then... Well, the Equalizer doesn't come out till the following week. So maybe I'll wait till the following week. Because I want to get the Equalizer. Because I really enjoyed that. But... You know, in closing, you know, I was just really, really happy that they finally released this to stores. I didn't have to get it from Disney Movie Club. I didn't have to get it from eBay. You know, finally. I fucking love Gargoyles. And come on, Disney. The first, the Season 1 came out over 10 years ago. 
and then you released season two, part one, and then you didn't do any more. So it took you 10 years to release this. Is it going to take you 20 years to release season three on DVD? I know people don't like season three, but just fucking release it. Sorry, folks. I, especially when it comes to cartoons. I get upset. But, God, you know, why is it so fucking hard just to put it on DVD? Just to fucking release it and just have it out there so people can buy it at their own convenience and just, you know, God, why is it so difficult? You know, I just don't get it. Whatever. You know, that that's what really pisses me off when it comes to DVD. You know, you can release 117 different versions of The Dark Knight Rises. DVD, DVD, Blu-ray, DVD, Blu-ray, digital copy, Walmart exclusive. But it takes you 10 years to release volume 2 of a season of a TV show. And, or The Simpsons. It takes you 20 years just to release the whole season and the show's been on for 25 years. Why is it so difficult? God damn, I'm sorry folks, but the last two animated series DVDs, I know I'm, I'm way behind here. Um, I These again were released in volumes for some stupid reason. I have volume two, um, and I got these in a lot on eBay, and the, the real reason why I wanted it, I did want volume one, but volume three was the real reason why I wanted it. But first up is volume one of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And this was the one that used to come on every day. And this is like the more goofy one, but this was the one I, I watched more as a kid. Um, I do like Sonic the Hedgehog, the Saturday morning one. I really enjoy that one. But I like this one more because I liked how it was more goofy and everything. And these like these were released by Shout Factory. And they released the first two and then season, or volume three, which I'll show in a minute here. I'm just, I didn't, it came in a booklet? I don't know if it came in a booklet. Uh, just like a little, that's cool though. Um, volume 1 and 2 were released like retail. Volume 3 you can only get on their website and then it went out of print because Shout Factory sold the rights. So Volume 3 is like extremely hard to find so that's why I bought the lot because I mean Volume 2 was also in it but I already have Volume 2 which I got in the last update and that was the one where I went to Ollie's and I bought one and it was missing the DVD so I had to go back and buy another one because I threw out my receipt. So, yeah, so now I have the complete series. I just want to show you the different artwork and stuff. I think the artwork is really cool on these. But, yeah, because I, I remember I emailed Shout Factory, and I'm like, do you have any more of Season 3 or Volume 3? I, like, I'll buy it. Like, I'm like, no. I'm like, whatever. Fuck Shout Factory. I might do a rant on Shout Factory because I'm not very happy with them, you know. And then, yeah, this is Volume 3. This was the one. And if you – I didn't notice this until I bought this DVD. But if you look, if you pay attention, the artwork is the fucking exact same thing on all three DVDs. If you look at the Volume 2 artwork, same fucking artwork. Like, come on, Shout Factory. But this, like I said, Volume 3, this was the one that they only released on the website. Um, this was like the last 22 episodes. But, um, you know, this is really why I bought the lot, because it has, it had this one. Um, but now I have the whole series, Volume 1 and Volume 3, Volume 2 I have upstairs. In terms of Sonic, I'm trying to get Volume 2 of Sonic Underground, which I remember watching, and then Sonic the Animated Series, because that one, that one's actually the hardest to find, besides this. Because I remember seeing this for like 10 bucks, and I didn't buy it, and then I saw it go for like $110. Finally this lot popped up, and I said, fuck it, just buy it. So there you go. Anyway. So that's all like the TV shows and stuff. So now let's get into the movies. And this is going to take the longest part. Like I said, if this video gets a little too long, I'm sure it will because I just foam from the mouth and everything. I will split it into parts. I'm going to start off with the Blu-rays first. Uh, first up, I know that Shout Factory released this and the other films in the series on Blu-ray. So you probably already know what I'm talking about. But I wanted to get this particular Blu-ray. If I could talk, that'd be great. Because this... Where's my... That's what I need. Need some Coke. I wanted to get this particular Blu-ray because it has features which are not on the 
the Shout Factory release. And I'm talking about the 30th anniversary edition of Halloween 2. Now, this one came out in 2011, obviously. And the Shout Factory, the first one came out in 2012. So, um, not much time difference there, which is okay. But I know this one had a lot of controversy, and I think this is the edited version. Because I know when the first copies came out, they took off Mustafa Akkad's name. And I know a lot of people were pissed off about that. I remember reading on like the official Halloween message board and all these other message boards. And even here on YouTube, people were fucking livid about that. And, and I understand because Mustafa Akkad was the basically the heart of the Halloween series. And, and I think this might be the edited version. I mean, it still says his name on the credits there, but I think when you watch the movie, I haven't watched this yet because I still don't have a Blu-ray player, but I got it really cheap. It was like 7 bucks, so that's why I wanted to get it. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people were very upset about that, and like I said, this may be the edited version. If it is, I'm not going to throw a fit because, number one, I already have it on DVD. I have it on VHS, so I'm not, a, I'm not upset, and I'm going to buy the Shout Factory set for the extras and stuff. But I wanted to get this because it actually has Terror in the Isles, which was a compilation video that came out in the 80s hosted by Donald Pleasance. And it just shows clips from different horror movies and stuff. And that's not on the other Blu-ray. This also has the alternate ending and deleted scenes, but those are on the other one. And I think it also has a commentary with the director. I don't think it says it on the back. But I think it's on here. But I love Halloween too. It's definitely one of my favorites of the series. And I, like I said, I wanted to get this Blu-ray because of Terror in the Isles. So that is Halloween 2, more of the night he came home. I love I love the Halloween films. They're my favorite horror films, really. Alright, next up, I actually got this at Target for 5 bucks, And, um, yeah, I just was very, very happy when I found it. I'm like, oh, cool, 5 bucks. That's awesome. And I have this movie on VHS, DVD, Laserdisc. Um, love this movie. Um, it's actually got the soundtrack earlier, so now you can start thinking. You probably already know what it is. But um, there was a reason why I wanted to get this, and I'll just go ahead and say what it is. It is Mortal Kombat on Blu-ray. Um, I don't mind having this another copy of this movie. I love Mortal Kombat. Um, the, reason, the real reason why I wanted to get this is because it has Mortal Kombat The Journey Begins. The, which was the animated movie that came out around the same time as the movie did, which I had that on VHS. My brother actually got that for me years ago. I was like, oh, cool. Like, I was just so happy when he got that for me. Um, I think it was my birthday or something. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that animated video. And it's not, on, like, it's not on DVD by itself. The only way to get it is if you buy this Blu-ray or if you get it on VHS. And it also came out on Laserdisc back in the day. So I'd like to pick that up just to have it. But it also has the trailer for the video game, which was the Mortal Kombat remake game. And it also has the trailer for the movie. But another film that definitely deserves a special edition. I mean, Mortal Kombat is a fucking amazing movie. The, the laser disc I have has a commentary and TV spots. You, I mean, And there's a lot of making of stuff from back in the day. Like, why is that not on this Blu-ray? So, again, Warner Brothers fucking dropped the ball. But... I still love it. It was five bucks. Next up are two films that came out this year that I was not the biggest fan of. But the first one my mom got me because she knew I kind of wanted it. And the second film I got because I had the other ones in the series. It has the extended cut, so I want to check out the extended cut. And at least it has features. At least I can watch the features. But first up, Sabotage. You already know my thoughts on Sabotage. The only thing I really liked about this film was Arnold. I thought Arnold did a good job. I mean, he's playing, like, anti-hero. He's, you know, I like Arnold, and I like some of the practical effects, but that was it. Sabotage, the rest of the movie sucked. I'm sorry. Sabotage fucking sucked. Whatever. And then, you probably already know this one, Expendables 3, I got. You know, like I said, it has the extended cut. And then it has features. But I don't like the artwork on here. Like, why is Ronda Rousey on the fucking front? You know, why isn't Wesley Snipes on the front? Why isn't Dolph Lundgren on the front? Why isn't Antonio Banderas on the front? 
And that's what the back looks like. But, I mean, it has a documentary, two featurettes, bloopers, and an extended scene. And the extended cut. But, you know, I'm not going to go into detail. Um, this next Blu-ray combo pack, this was a movie that came out this year, and this was a much more enjoyable film. I saw this in theaters, really enjoyed it. I actually downloaded it to watch it at home, and then I picked up this uh, DVD Blu-ray combo pack. But um, this is definitely one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, I've, only, I've seen it a few times, and I love this movie. I thought it was really, really well done. And I'm talking about Jersey Boys, the story of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. I love this movie. Jersey Boys was a great film. Like I said, it's one of my favorites of the year. Uh, just a great movie. I thought it was really, really well done. I know it didn't make a whole lot of money, but I really liked it. And uh, the last, well, the next two are actually uh, sets. I've uh, been wanting to get actually both of these for a while. And this first one I got for $19 with free shipping off of eBay. And the seller said it was in acceptable condition, but it's actually in really good shape. There's only one little problem with it, and that's it. I mean, I can just glue that, but I mean, I'm not going to because it's just little. But um, I've been wanting to get this for a while because it has new features and everything, and I love all four of these films. Um, so I don't mind having this on Blu-ray, but I got the Lethal Weapon Collection. Um, this has um, all new commentary tracks from Richard Donner, except for Lethal Weapon 4. I think Lethal Weapon 4 has the commentary from the DVD. Um, it has the trailers for all four movies. Uh, Lethal Weapon 1 and 3 have music videos. Lethal Weapon 2 has the stunts featurette from the DVD. Lethal Weapon 4 has the documentary from the DVD. And then Lethal Weapon 1, 2, and 3 have deleted scenes because these are the, the theatrical versions. I have the director's cuts on DVD. I, Lethal Weapon, the first one, the director's cut, I really liked. Two and three, they didn't really add much, but I still like the scenes that were in them. Because Lethal Weapon 2, the director's cut, has the scene where Leo's talking about the nines. Like, it's the ninth house on the ninth street, and that's how they find out where the house is. That scene I thought was pretty fun. I don't know why they cut that out. But the first one, um, well, the first three movies, like I said, have deleted scenes. But it's not just the scenes that were in the director's cut. Like Lethal Weapon, I know there's scenes with um, the daughter's boyfriend. And I think Lethal Weapon 2 and 3 have more scenes that they cut out um, on there, which is pretty cool. And then it has a bonus disc, which has a couple new featurettes. That's what the, the back looks like of the, of the case. It's the same front. And then there's the bonus disc. Lethal Weapon 4... Lethal Weapon 3 and 2, Lethal Weapon 1. I know a lot of people don't like the fourth one as much, but I, I love all four. I, I love all the movies. Lethal Weapon. And uh, got this yesterday at uh, BJ's. This was 25 bucks, and I was very surprised how cheap it was. That's why I picked it up. Uh, these films definitely need no introduction. I love all four of these films. Um, I've been wanting to get this because I'm actually interested to see what they look like on Blu-ray, like Lethal Weapon, and I forgot to mention that. And it also has new features, so that's why I wanted to pick it up as well. And it is Indiana Jones, The Complete Adventures on Blu-ray. And I don't mind. I love the Indiana Jones films to death. I love all four movies. I love Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I saw it in theaters. I thought it was a great movie. And like I said, it has new features, and I really like the, uh, it's a digibook type of packaging. That's what the back looks like, and I really like the artwork on the inside. I think the artwork is badass. Oh, and guess what? These are the original films, George Lucas, unlike the fucking Star Wars Blu-rays. I know, like, there are people who are like, well, now that Disney owns it, they should release the original ones on Blu-ray. If they do, I'll probably buy them because I want to see them in high definition. Because the DVDs I have of the originals, they're not in HD. Like, they're not remastered at all. They're, like, VHS quality. Like, my laser discs look better than the fucking DVDs. That's why I still have my laser disc. But, Indiana Jones. Can't go wrong with Indy. Junior. Don't call me Junior. <laughs> and um, I actually got two more Blu-rays and two DVDs, but I wanted to show these together because... They're actually Jason Statham movies. I got some more Jason Statham movies. Uh, first up, this came out. This come out last year. 
Oh, the year before. A th year before? No, a couple years. Oh, I thought it came out last year. But uh, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. I got this for five bucks at Target when I picked up uh, Mortal Kombat, Expendables 3, and another film. But I got the Blu-ray combo pack of Killer Elite. And I actually like this. And this is not a remake of the 70s film like I thought it was. But this is another, they just used the title. But I like this film. Um, De Niro's in it. I thought De Niro did pretty good. Um, I watched it the other day. Yeah, I thought it was a good movie. And then this, and the next movie I got today, these are actually a series of films. Uh, the first one is Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Finally got a hold of this. It was only five bucks. Uh, Blu-ray DVD combo pack. But this is the theatrical version. They did an extended cut on DVD, which I'd like to pick up. But uh, this is one of Jason Statham's first movies. Um, it's directed by Guy Ritchie. Sting is also in the movie. The singer, not the wrestler. Vinnie Jones is in it. It's, it's a British crime film. But I love British films. Um, so I finally got a hold of that. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Great movie. And then I also got the sequel on DVD. Snatch. Um, yeah, as you can see, Brad Pitt's in the movie. Dennis Farina, Benicio Del Toro. Um, a lot of features on here, so I can't wait to sit down and watch these again. I've been wanting to get these for a while on DVD. Great movies. And then the last Jason Statham film, this is the one that, yeah, this came out last year. I thought, for some reason, I thought Killer Elite came out last year. But I know people didn't really like this movie, but I enjoyed it, although the advertisement was misleading, which is a lot of films nowadays. And I got this for five bucks at Walmart, so I figured, hey, it's five bucks. I mean, if I don't like it. But I enjoyed it. I actually watched it twice already. I watched it once by myself, and then my mom wanted to watch it, so I watched it with her. So I got Parker. I like Parker. Good cast in it, too. Michael Chiklis is in the film. Big fan of his work. Jennifer Lopez, Nick Nolte. But I enjoyed Parker. Okay, I'm just going to check the camera here. Oh, shit. Well, I mean, I'm already an hour into this, and I'm on one bar for the battery. So I'm going to talk about a couple more and then I'm just going to cut and recharge the battery and probably do the rest later because whatever. So let's talk about a few more and then we'll, uh, we'll move on here. Let's talk about these and then we'll cut. Um, these are just some martial arts DVDs that I picked up. Uh, first, this is a documentary. And I got this like really cheap. It was like two bucks or something. But the quality of this DVD was awful. I actually watched a version on YouTube. And the quality was like a hundred times better. But I thought this was a pretty cool documentary. The reason why I wanted to get it is because it actually has a little, little tiny bit of behind the scenes footage from Hard Target. The, with Van Damme and John Woo in it. Um, so that's why I wanted to get it. And it's called Cinema of Vengeance. It's basically just a, a documentary about the martial arts films and the Hong Kong films and everything. Uh, Gary Daniels is in here. Sammo Hong. Uh, John Woo, Cynthia Rothrock, Chow Yun-Fat, a bunch of people are in here. Um, but that's Cinema of Vengeance. And then I got some instructional DVDs. Um, these are, they're like, they're, I guess they could be considered bootlegs, but if you buy these from the, the person's website, this is exactly what you're going to get. So I actually got the uh, Dan Inosanto, who was one of Bruce Lee's, uh, Bruce Lee's highest ranking instructor, one of his closest friends, one of my teachers. Um, this is the Filipino Martial Arts series, and it's a six DVD set. And that's volume one and two. The back is all the same on all of them, but the front's different. Volume one and two. Three and four. And five and six. And these actually are all transfers from the original VHS. That's exactly what you're going to get if you buy it from his website. But I watched a little bit of these. Great stuff on here. And Dan Santo is one of the greatest martial artists of all time. Although he will deny that because when I when I met him, when I trained with him, I we we discussed that, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not. I'm like, guess you are." But but um, no, he's great. Great martial artist. Very wonderful person. A wonderful human being as well. I have the definitive collection coming. That's a nine DVD set. But I got these first. So yep, that is the Filipino martial arts by Dan Santo. And that's going to be it for this part. Like I said, the battery's just about to die if it already hasn't died. No, I'm good. So I'll cut, and then I'll do the rest of the movies later. So take care, and bye-bye.